Hello! And happy Hug Nation to you. I am all discombobulated from traveling and I missed our time today, my weekly afternoon broadcast that I've been doing for two decades. But because I am someone who is dedicated, uh, that word came up when during my Costa Rican retreat in describing things about me and I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I can, I, I, I'll take that. I am dedicated to being here uh, and and uh, my practice of sharing things on my mind once a week. And so today I wanted to share uh, some thoughts about, not about my trip uh, to Costa Rica, although as that settles and I process that, I perhaps will share that next week or another time, who knows? But today I wanted to talk about going to Burning Man 2021. So, welcome and thank you for being here. <sighs> welcome. I'm Halcyon and today I want to talk about going to Burning Man 2021. Or are we going to Burning Man 2021? Well, I think this is an important question. And uh, here's the deal. <sighs> this has been an interesting week of discussing, excuse me, not week, year. <sighs> you know what, let me start over. <sighs> welcome, I'm Halcyon, and welcome to Hug Nation. Today's Belief Buffet is talking about, are we going to Burning Man this year? This has been a <sighs> challenging year to be discussing Burning Man at all. There have been some very beautiful posts uh, discussing why we should take this year off as a community, why it's irresponsible, why it's insensitive, why it shows privilege, why it is all sorts of reasons why it is unsafe. Um, and, and I think these are valid issues and valid conversations. Unfortunately, around these conversations, there's also we've fallen into some divisiveness that we've been Ooh, being trained for by our media for the last four years. We're so trained, we're so good at having just hate-filled and, and vilifying conversations. We discuss things. No, we don't. We attack one another. We, we propose truth and facts um, with the assumption that the other is stupid, a sheep, an idiot, and things like that. Oh, do we have an echo? Oh, I think there's a, I know that why that could be. Thank you for the information, Carol, on my echo. The reason why there was an echo is because what I have to say is so important, you need to hear it twice, 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 twice. No. So, you may remember, but a year ago, I publicly said that we should not be going to the playa this year. A big part of that was influenced by the, that was the request of the Burning Man organization. And I agreed with their, their premise that it would be bad for the optics of our community. And it would just be a bad idea in terms of team human and team recovery and team let's, you know, fight the buggers or uh, the virus. I said buggers because I'm rereading a um, uh, Ender's Game and uh, Speaker of the Dam, I mean, Speaker of the Dead, which you have, if you've read any of those uh, Orson Scott Card books. I'm getting distracted. Why? Because I'm so excited to be talking to you. Okay, so last year I was like, no, we should not go. And I got a lot of flack and I got a lot of, yay, that's correct. This year I've been trying to say, hey, let's, let's, try to have these conversations without that really harsh anger that happened last year. And maybe I'm saying that because I got so bruised by the attacks that I fielded and, the, and the, the, the blows that I took. Yes, I signed up for it. Yes, I put myself out there and had those conversations and I was, I'm was i honored that I have the, the soapbox and the amplifier to do so but man it was there was some hurtful shit said and i was like why as a community are we having this conversation with so much venom so much poison so this year i was like can we please be having these conversations more civilly can we can we 
if, 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 if a community of radical inclusion, if a community that has the principles to fall back on, that has so much support built into it for one another and our authentic truths, how, why can't we have this conversation better? So I have been, well, in the back of my mind, I've been kind of hoping there is going to be no burn because there's just so much work involved and in, in considering how late in the year we are. There's just like, just like, I, I, I just kind of was hoping to just get a free pass this year, but I've been open to the conversation about why it is okay and, and why maybe it's a good idea. Like maybe there's the, the argument you could make that as the world is shifting into some new dynamics, that burners are the ones, if anyone, who could be figuring out how we can create socially responsible gathering dynamics and models. The argument comes up, yeah, well, there's so many people that are financially hurting right now. It is offensive and it is uh, privileged and it is exclusive to, to have an event while so many people are suffering. To which I would say, I think that is an excellent thing to be thinking about. And at the same time, I do not feel like non-participation is the solution. Because guess what's going to be happening a year from now? A lot of artists are going to be financially hurting and unable to go to Burning Man. You know what was happening two years ago? A lot of artists were financially hurting and unable to go to Burning Man. You know what's going to be happening in 10 years and in 20 years? A lot of people that should be at Burning Man are going to be financially unable to do so. And so I don't, well, I think that is a conversation that we should continue to have and try to increase the, the opportunities for low-income tickets or for sponsorships or whatever the case may be, but non-participation it, it does not seem like the solution. I don't think like this year isn't any particularly better or worse year to to say, oh, if we don't do it this year, then we're going to evaporate the idea that there is a, a that that a Burning Man experience is that one that requires a, a degree of privilege. That is a truth that we just need to figure out and talk about as a community. Okay, but. There's more that I think is significant and the more of the reason why I am now leaning into, yeah, I think, I think I want to go. And I think, I think Big Pink Heart should go. If a bunch of things happen as they could, or at least I'm certainly keeping open the possibility that we could. Because let's say, from what I'm seeing in, in the news reports, and honestly, I've not been following that closely, so, you know, hurl your facts and statistics at me and call me an ignorant sheep, whatever that makes you happy, but I prefer a compassion and soothing dialogue. In fact, let me, let me take that back. I will only entertain a compassionate and soothing dialogue. But um, let's say, let's say we are following this trajectory of vaccination and we are following this trajectory of decreased um, infections and let's say we could by the time of the burn be at a line where it's as good as it's gonna get in some of our conversations that I've talked with people someone come up well what about all the people that are gonna go out there that are gonna be irresponsible what about the people that are gonna go out there that aren't gonna be vaccinated with the people that, that don't give a fuck well guess what that is gonna be the new normal at some point, maybe it's going to be in three months, four months, five months, a year. At some point, we're going to hit this line where that's going to be the way it's going to be from now on. We are going to have everyone who wants to be vaccinated, vaccinated, and groups of people that are not. And we're going to have to figure out what is our risk line that we are willing to cross? What is the, the requirements that we need to be radically self-reliant for us to feel comfortable participating? That's not just a Burning Man. That's going to be in everything in life, whether that is... It, we, we make that decision right now in grocery stores. We make that decision right now in walking on the streets. We hope that the people around us follow the guidelines that the CDC gives us. And in the same is case with a Burning Man or any gathering, we hope that our people are going to follow the guidelines that we are, are given. And then beyond that, we got to kind of take care of ourselves and figure out how we're going to navigate this new normal. 
if you think that the possibility of people being unvaccinated or even uh, getting that the, the, the chance of getting sick in a mass gathering is too much, then you should not go. But I think we are going to get to a place very soon where the, the idea of, of, well, we'll wait it out for one more year is not going to matter. We're going to have to figure it out. And we're going to have to make those decisions. Um, I, I know a number of people that have been sick. I've got family members that have been sick. I have not suffered tragedy close to home. And maybe you could say, well, you'd feel differently if that was the case. Um, at the same time, I also know the, the, the harm, the mental health harm, the, the quality of life harm that, that we're all enduring right now. Do I think it's worth it? Yes, but at some point it won't be. At some point, the risk of gathering with our vaccinations and our uh, whatever else is required when we follow these things, we will have to find a way to go on and live within the risk parameters and connect because connecting is what we do as humans. I feel the toll. I feel the the withering of my spirit i say that not as a complaint i say that as a truth that that is what has been required of us in this time and that we are going to have to start making some internal math looking at our risk calculations of where we want to 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 come out for ourselves and i think that it is possible that this burning man it will be possible to have a gathering in a responsible way in experimenting with the new normal. And is it going to be a different burn? Absolutely. Is it going to be a half-ass burn? I hope so. The spirit of Burning Man to me is not about the magnitude of a theme camp production. It is not about the, you know, the epicness of things. It is about the spirit and the creativity and the vibe that collectively we create for one another when we follow the 10 principles. And I, I think that we can do that in a half-assed way. Scrappily, the better in some cases. There's a reason why I find, you know, regionals so, so heart-fulfilling is because they are scrappier. Half-ass. Fuck that word, half-ass. Let's say scrappier. Full-assed. Full-assed and scrappy. That's going to be the unofficial theme of Burning Man 2021. Yes, Undiscovered Worlds or whatever they have renamed it to. But more importantly, half... Oh, I've already, I'm already messing it up. Don't make the sticker yet, but I think it should be full-assed and scrappy. Burning Man 2021. I should say, I am not saying... I'm going there no matter fucking what. I'm saying that let's meet the trajectory of our of 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 where we're going in a way that this could make sense. If it doesn't, you know, if we get the 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 ixnay on the Athering Gay from CDC or the BLM or the organization, then you know, I'm willing to bow to scientists and wiser folk than I. But I think that it's also a valid to look to the light at the end of the tunnel and responsibly plan for that. This is not a commitment that Pink Art will be on the playa. This is a, a, a hope and a desire and a, 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 a request or invitation to others to entertain what, what this could look like for you, for your camp. Um, for other gatherings. So, thank you. I love you, and I hope I get to see you at home in one way or another. Let's see. Paul said I'm going probably no matter what. You know what? I'm not going to say that publicly yet, but that has crossed my mind. Um, 
I won't say no. No, I, I won't say. I won't say no matter what. I, I say that I might go even if there is no official Burning Man, if there is a argument to be made that a uh, safe gathering c can happen. Um, Carol's saying, I believe it all comes down to whether or not the Bureau of Land Management gives a permit to the, the Burning Man organization. If the BLM thinks it's safe, I'm inclined to believe it's safe. I think that's a, a, a solid uh, argument and case. I, I find it somewhat interesting that some somewhere in the kind of uh, enthusiastic um, attitudes of the last year, that some people have become so uh, passionate about stopping the spread of the virus that um, they kind of, it's like we listen to the scientists to tell them what we need to do, but we're not going to listen to the scientists when they say it's safer again? I don't know. At some point, you either do or don't listen to experts, uh, and I'm inclined to 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 agree with with uh, with Carol on that. You know, if I hate him. I never thought I'd say this, but I guess I'll listen to the BLM. Uh, Devin saying, love is the place. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Devin also worked at a hotel and that industry died. Now working at a grocery store. Woo! Devin, that sounds like you are taking the brunt of all this. And um, uh, I, I certainly hope that you are you and yours are staying safe and healthy as possible because that just sounds shitty. Mahan saying at this pace we're going to need an annual update to the vaccine like with the flu shot. Maybe so. I'm no scientist. I'm going to follow the direction of uh, of the experts. And I think, you know, if we get to a place where, you know, we're... we're f There's a big difference between risk of illness and risk of death and hospital overflowing. You know, I think the whole point of of slowing the curve and all that shit was to to stop deaths, not to eliminate illness in the world. And if there if they if we can find a plan to minimize risk and it requires booster shots or whatever, look, I, I have a lot more faith in our um, our leadership now than I did a year ago. Is that because I'm biased? Probably, but it also feels like um, shit's getting done. Does that mean I trust authority at all times? No, but I also got to make some choices. Um, Jane said, reframing this year to janky man and let us off the hook. Don't shoot for perfection and see what emerges. Exactly, yes. Uh, full asked. Uh, no, I've already forgot what I said. <laughs> Janky man. There you go. Uh, that's even better. Uh... <laughs> Helix! Helix, I was just thinking about you. I trust you too. Um, yeah, I, I was just in Costa Rica and uh, uh, thinking about... Uh, beautiful people in beautiful places, and I was thinking about you a bunch. So, uh, I, in fact, one of my downloads from from my travels was connect with you soon. So I will reach out, and you know, probably irresponsible and weird for me to be doing this uh, publicly on a live broadcast, but um, I aim for irresponsible and rude. That's my new go-to. Joel saying that even going to regionals in the fall would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, just so I just went to a retreat and we had like a 20 person group that kind of treated each other as a pod. I know it was a big risk. I got tested before I went. I got tested after gathering with them. I got tested five days later. I've gotten, you know, three negative uh, COVID tests in the last 21 days or something like that. Um, but having a period of time interacting with a group of 20 people maskless and getting to know people and connecting and it felt so much like a burning man um getting to know incredible people deeply transparently open-hearted i mean 
I was kind of blown away with how alive I felt and how much I remembered who I was. And, um, and it's one of the reasons why I have a renewed kind of passion to, to do what it takes to, to make responsible gatherings happen. Um, whereas, you know, a month ago I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to go if people want to build shit in the desert, but I don't want to be responsible. I don't, I'm not, it's not, I don't want to put the work in. Now I'm like, I'm, I'm in. It's, it's important. Um, so speaking of like Costa Rican COVID tests, I don't know how your tests have gone, but uh, my previous American tests, when I got swabbed in the nose, I was like, whatever, you know, like, it, you know, maybe it's, I'm, I'm a nose picker and I'm used to having my fingers up my nose. I didn't think it was that big a deal. Whatever, you know, Ugh, a little weird. But dude, in Costa Rica... And, and I heard that this is possible because of some of the new strains so that they are, they, they hide deep in the nose or something like that. But dude, they were like threading this swab up my nose. Like I was like, I mean, I literally felt it like back in my mouth. Like it, I felt like it went, you know, like you're getting water up your nose or, or it, it felt like, um, it didn't feel like it went to the brain. It felt like it, it was. I don't know. It was, it was, you know, they, they, they said like, don't squinch up your face, breathe through the mouth. And like, we, we, after like three threads, I was like, oh, I, I can't help it. I can't help but squinch my face. Oh. Uh. Terry is saying, I'd love to be there and I'll follow the science. Yes. My question is official presence with all the bells and whistles or pink fabric and lawn chairs. Well, so that's, I mean, this gets into a little bit of the, um, the, the questions that, that we as a camp have, and I'm sure a lot of camps are having this situation of like, well, if we go, like to what degree do we bring our offerings? Pink Heart has storage in San Diego, uh, in Reno. We have two storage containers that live in Nevada that are generally dropped off on Playa each year. So will we have access to those containers? And if we have access to those containers, then like we kind of have a shit ton of infrastructure that's just going to be dropped in the desert so even if we have a small crew we could set up some pretty cool stuff um and we could even probably say like hey who's here they wants to help us set up some shade structures um then we also have to put that stuff away though so i, I don't know i don't know i mean i my my right now my dream scenario is i would love to have a uh, pink shade and the beacon up and, you know, if we can do water uh, safely, that would be great, too. Um, I'm thinking probably skip ice cream this year. Be maybe a tough thing to do uh, safely. And, um, and also just the logistics of that are, are so much. But if we just had shade and a beacon, I think that would be incredible. That would be, that'd be enough for me. I don't know. Uh, Joel asking, how will ticketing work? I feel like they're starting way too late. I don't know. Yes, I, they are starting way too late. Everything is, everything is too late. That's why this is janky man or full assed and, uh, and scrappy. Um, I know that, that they've reached out to the theme camps and asked us about DGS tickets, the, um, kind of with direct group sale tickets that they, they generally do. And they've asked, you know, how many tickets would you like or need and if you are going to bring something and they've also said that look we're not expecting you to bring your full offerings and you won't be penalized for that that you know we which is it, it's the kind of thing that, that we worry about as theme camps you know like fuck like are we going to lose our placement are we going to lose our good standing if we you know do uh, a less than incredible job and or or if we skip a year and they've said like we're not going to hold it against you either way um, Paul saying that they started doing the deep tests and then Bill Gates did a study that showed us that a shorter, shorter swab would do. Shorter swab. Shorter swab would also do. Well, um, I, maybe it's the Costa Ricans feel like uh, they've been watching too much um, QAnon anti-Bill Gates propaganda films because they are still very attached to the forearm length swab. <laughs> Yes. Um, so 
again, I am not committing to going to Burning Man. I am excited by the possibility. I'm also kind of leaving a little bit like don't get too excited because as we've talked about, the BLM could pull it. Um, there's a lot of things that could happen that, uh, you know, we could just look at news and, and science and they, they could say like, whoa, fuck, there's some new strains and this is this would be so irresponsible for the people of Nevada and for, you know, fellow humans to have a, a large gathering. Or we might find a way to say, hey, look, there are ways to do outdoor gatherings um, with social distancing. Or we might say, holy fuck, we are on the other side and everyone who's going to be vaccinated is vaccinated. And we all are now having to figure out what does personal responsibility mean in a post-vaccination but COVID present world. This is going to be discussed. And the important thing is that hopefully we can discuss it without the labels of, of sheep or fear or you know, idiot, and we can just say, "Hey, look, I, I, I see where you're coming from. I, I understand the, the, the argument that we should sit this one out. I also understand the argument that that's not necessary in everyone's mind, and I'm willing to listen to the arguments that would say it absolutely is necessary. And if, and if you can convince me or, or explain it to me in a way that, that honors, you know, my intellect and my heart." Yeah, fuck yeah. I'm not I'm not dug in and and in, you know unable to change my mind. Especially if people can have conversations with with love. So, I'm listening with love. If you can speak with love, I'm here. Uh, Paul saying if if the BLM pulled the permit, wouldn't the event just get better? Renegade Man round two. Now, uh, that's an area where I, I I think you could certainly make that, um, the case could be made for that. And that's an area where I would have to really think hard about where I would publicly, you know, how I would publicly um, make a recommendation or, or such. You know, I think that, like last year, I think it was it was good that it was a officially non-happening event because those that went had to be really clear that they were going to be radically self-reliant and responsible. When it was an open event, especially in the last few years, there have been people that just show up without um, the required, you know, um, preparation and such. And I think that if we, I, I, I think that that we need to. So. I, yeah, so maybe I should stop talking about that and uh, stay tuned. Hello, Cass, and hello, Nicole. Nicole asking, uh, am I going or not feel like it? I do feel like going. Right now, I'm feeling like uh, if our trajectory of vaccination and, um, and such is at a place where everyone who wants to be vaccinated is vaccinated by the time of the burn in the United States, then I think that... Uh, finding a way to have a responsible gathering seems like a very honorable path for burners. That that being on the f front edge of responsible socializing in the way that we are going to have to be figuring it out from now on um, could make a lot of sense and could be therapeutic in in, in a big way. I've never, you know, I've, I've, I've never felt that Burning Man is a place to to um, be protected and safe. I've felt that it's a place that I push limits so that I feel alive. And I always know that I'm undertaking risk by going there. It's fucking on the ticket. It's uh, it's baked into our ethos, and um, and so finding the way to be civically responsible within the kind of. Uh, risk accepting ethos that we have is is what we've been dealing with and that you know I did a video last week a, a couple weeks ago about what is you know civic responsibility is it non-participation to avoid any possible um, increase in transmission risks or is radical 
I mean, there's civic responsibility about finding ways to create community and foster community and, and rekindle the connections that we have between fellow humans that have been getting sick and that have been making us mentally sick. I think the answer is somewhere threading the needle between those two. And if anyone can do it, burners can. And I, when I say, I don't think it has to be um, BlackRock City. I think that, you know, whatever, wherever we're heading, whether it, it could be smaller gatherings, it can be regionals, but I think we need to be aware that whether it's in five months or a year, we are going to have to find ways to responsibly gather in groups because it's one of the things that makes being a human being the gift that it is. And we are able to handle massive sacrifices in the short term to protect that gift in the long run, but not indefinitely. At some point, we get to a place of where individually we have to make decisions about the kind of risks that we're willing to take for a quality of life that we, that that we require or that we we are willing to 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 risk we we do that now we've always doing that we every day we we play a game of risk of of what we are willing to 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 risk as we get on a freeway for example um it's just that that risk analysis has gotten more tricky and hopefully as vac not hopefully absolutely mathematically as vaccinations get more widespread those statistics and that those the, the risk analysis will change for each of us Joel saying um, I feel like the international inclu in international inclusivity adds additional levels of complexity to the burn yes however I don't think that non-participation is a solution to that. I mean, New Zealand had their burn this year. Kiwi burn fucking rocked and went off. Why? Because Kiwi burn fucking, because New Zealand rocked their COVID uh, response. Should they not have had it because, you know, foreigners couldn't attend? No, that would be crazy. All the regionals, everyone that, that finds a responsible way to do so should do so. I don't think I don't think not having it because some people can't make it. I think that's a crazy idea. You know, if we don't have Burning Man because people who don't have enough money can't go, that's a crazy idea. Just talking about it is a good idea. And when I say crazy, maybe maybe that sounded in the same way of idiotness that that um, that people that I was just. Uh, bad talking earlier so maybe i'm being hypocritical critical in, in the way that i just said that when i say it is crazy to not do an event because some people can't go that was uh too harshly said i personally feel like that is a good point to bring up it will change the dynamic of the event but if if it's only san franciscans for a year I think, okay, the world's all shook up. We, we'll, we'll have it only San Franciscans for a year or whoever can make it. And then as we, the next year, maybe more internationally will be able to come back. Um, yeah. Uh, Helix saying, I'm hearing if it does happen, it will be much smaller, about a third of normal capacity if I heard the same. Uh, I have heard that uh, I've heard a few things that also that, that turned out to not be true. So I'm not sure if my the sources that I've heard, I, but I've heard that, yeah, that, that the the, um, the permit might be a, a, a smaller and a, a third size is, is what I heard as well about a, a much smaller gathering in terms of the permit size. Um, but, um, and I, it'd be interesting to see like how many people, you know, would they still have the same demand? You know, a third size, would we then have the same um, scarcity problem that we've always had? Or will a bunch of people get a chance to go that have always wanted to? 
I think we're still going to have a scarcity problem. Um, Isaac calling it the yank burn. Um, you know, uh, Burning Man has always been about working with the natural world and dealing with whatever windstorms happen, whatever uh, natural phenomenons are trying to, to kill you and destroy you and keep you out of this this very uh, harsh environment. So the whole world has been under a extended natural event trying to knock down our shade structures and destroy. So I think the same solution that we've always had at Burning Man is well, you adapt. And that doesn't mean you adapt, you have to adapt in a way that makes it, a, you know, all things available to all people. Radical inclusion does not mean all things available to all people. It means everyone is welcome to bring their art and their vibe. That is still the case. Now, if there are natural circumstances that make that impossible for some people, that's the nature of, of this experience. Will we and should we as a community try to facilitate people who might have obstructions, whether those be geographic or uh, financial or uh, able, um, ableness? Sure. Yes. That's just how I feel about it. Um, I. I one thing is for sure, and I think that the, the, the writing that uh, Stuart did about this year's theme, I think really did a beautiful job of discussing how this is a, um, this year is, is, is a reset no matter what. Whether it happens or not, Burning Man in some ways has been fully dismantled like it never has before. Sure, we take down the city to, to nothing every year and leave no trace and build it every year. But, you know, it's a pretty well-oiled machine and, and it's, and it's, we have mastered this environment such that it's pretty dependable. So now what has happened? We have, Burning Man has finally really hit its first legitimate worldwide dust storm and it has to adapt. And from these ashes, we're going to figure out what we can do. And maybe it won't be everything we hoped for this year. And very possibly, within those limitations will be magic way beyond what we can create with everything working perfectly. Will Pink Heart go to the burn? We are still in discussions. We are, at this point, we're still... Um, we are moving forward as if it is, it is a possibility. And it is looking more and more like it is a possibility. So what that will look like and to what degree we'll be able to figure out our infrastructure and our, our team, that is to be determined. All right, well, uh, thanks for chilling with me and having a little dialogue about this. I hope we have these conversations uh, moving forward that are things like, hey, what are you going to bring? Are you going to bring this? Because I'm going to bring this. And we can start actually making some plans. The, the organization has encouraged the camps already to start like uh, working together, which is difficult because we don't know where we're going to be camped, of course. But, um, you know, probably we'll have less, less of a well-oiled machine, much scrappier. Um, and maybe that'll require, you know, uh, some of the troubleshooting and problem solving and community magic that makes Burning Man so great. Uh, I'm, look, I'm, 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 I'm feeling optimistic and I'm looking forward to any opportunity to gather with two, five, ten or ten thousand 
beautiful people in a responsible way. I can't wait to see you soon. I love you. Oh, I also decided when I'm in Costa Rica that I'm going to be doing uh, love moment mornings. So um, 8.30 or 9 every morning I'm going to do a little Facebook Live and uh, just ponder and send out love. So if, you're, if you need a little boost in the morning, just give me a comment, join the broadcast, and I'll, uh, I'll send out a big love blast to you as well. So follow me and make sure you get notified when I go live to, to make sure you see those things. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned and we'll be, we'll be on the road to the playa, wherever, whatever that looks like. <laughs> love you, love you, love you, love you. Oh, also, I'm still doing uh, gratitude circles twice a day. Got one coming in 20 minutes if you want to go to zoom.hugnation.com. Man, for someone who's kind of just floating through life, I seem to have a lot of responsibilities. <laughs> yeah, but they're by choice. Big difference. Have a beautiful day. See you at home.